As another example of Ohm's law in action here, uh, we like to build a simple circuit that just involved a single photoresistor. So this is the resistor whose resistance varies with light intensity. Uh, it's a nice example to use with Ohm's law because we have this sort of action-oriented terms of Ohm's law right here that says the current is inversely proportional to the resistance at the same voltage, of course. So as R goes up, current goes down, and vice versa. So what we have here is we just have the photoresistor in the circuit here. Let's just take a quick voltage measurement. So I'm going to click my meter over in the 20 volt scale here, and I'll just clip these two leads directly across the photoresistor as it sits in the circuit, like this and about 8.6 volts. So again, I have this 9 volt battery, which is a bit questionable, but that's about what I'm getting here. So see, I have a fixed voltage on the photoresistor. Now what we know about the photoresistor is that its resistance varies with light intensity, so I can vary the light intensity across the photoresistor, say, by moving my hand in the way, and the voltage stays about the same, goes from about 8.6 to 8.7. My battery is acting kind of unreliably, or I can sort of cover it by hand here and get about the same amount. So we're not seeing much change in the voltage across the photocell. So we're just going to say that the voltage is about constant here, but we do know the resistance is changing. So if I disconnect the meter for a minute here, and let's let's make a current measurement now in the same circuit. So I'm going to click my meter over to the 200 milliamp scale right there, and I'll sort of grab that current coming right out of the photo cell there, and the one that's returning like that, just sort of get in there like that. So I'm getting about 24 milliamps flowing through the circuit. So again, as we sort of proven, the voltage is more or less constant in this circuit here, but the resistance is going to change now with light intensity. So watch what happens to the current as I hold my hand over the, over the photoresistor now. So I'm not touching anything. It drops all the way down to about 9.4 milliamps, back up to 24, down to about 9.4, 24 again. If I really make it dark by covering with my finger, it drops as low as 7.1. So see, this is another example of Ohm's law here. I'm seeing variations in the current not because the voltage is changing, but because of the because of the resistance is changing, and we happen to know about photocells that they get very the resistance gets very large when it's dark. So as I cover it, the resistance gets large and the current drops because remember current and voltage are inverses to each other. The larger R, the smaller I. And if I really hit it with some bright light here, like even get a flashlight on there, I can make that current go even up even more. Something like to 27, 28 or so. So it didn't go up much higher, but that's what I did by, by hitting with a bunch of light like that. The resistance got very small, so the current got very high. So that's just another nice example of Ohm's law. And we can repeat the same example here, just to sort of show you that electronics is a sort of a very active kind of field to be in here. Let's put the thermistor in there. The thermistor was that temperature-dependent resistor. So this is a resistor whose resistance depends on temperature. So see, right away it has a very much larger resistance here, so I'll click down to a more sensitive scale here, but it looks like I'm getting something about 1.1 milliamps flowing through this circuit with 9 volts across it. So again, another example of Ohm's law. And so let's go ahead and pinch the thermistor to heat it with our hand. Let's see what happens to our current. So see the current starting to go up. So can you guess then with the current going up as I'm pinching the resistor heating it, do you think the resistance is going up or down? I think it's going down because the current's getting larger. If the current's getting larger, the resistance must be dropping because the resistance in the, is in the bottom of this fraction. And here it is getting smaller again, returning back to state as it returns to room temperature so the thermistor is cooling off a bit relative to being pinched between my fingers. So if the current went down, the resistance must be going up again. So you see, we see this nice effect here where it will actually change numbers and witness different currents flowing through a circuit following Ohm's law here with different circuit elements, both the thermistor and the photocell. So that's just another two examples of Ohm's law.